It's Thursday, August 16th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, Town Councilor Paula Schnepp, Precinct 12, joins us in studio, and we fly over to the airport to see what's going on with the new manager. Let's start with some news you can use. Traveling to or from Martha's Vineyard this weekend, the Steamship Authority is advising its customers that service changes will be taking place this weekend due to events in Oak Bluffs and Falmouth. Friday evening, 6.30 to 7.30 and 8.30 trips scheduled between Wids Hole and Oak Bluffs will be diverted to Vineyard Haven due to the annual fireworks display at Ocean Park. On Sunday, the Falmouth Road Race taking place on Sunday morning is expected to produce traffic delays throughout the day. Woods Hole and Palmer, Palmer Avenue will be closed for the race between approximately 8 and 10 Sunday morning. While no trips are canceled on Sunday, customers traveling between 8 a.m. and 1045 must be on the Woods Hole Terminal property no later than 8 a.m. if they plan to travel or have a vehicle reservation. Vehicles traveling from the vineyard to Woods Hole will not be able to leave the terminal area after disembarking their vessel and arriving. Customers will be unable to ride a bus to the authority's parking lots until after the road is reopened. Paula Schnepp, town councilor for Peace in 12, Marston's Mills joins us for an in-studio to talk about the cannabis overlay district items on the town council agenda tonight, housing initiatives, and Every Millbilly's favorite day, Marston's Mills Village Day. Three, two. With me today, Town Councilor Paula Schnepp, Marston's Mills District. I'm a Millbilly. You're a Millbilly. I am. 22 Mil years. Millbilly's, uh, you know, this particular uh, little village of uh, Barnstable is, I always think, is one of one of the only ones without any tourism, which is kind of funny to say. But there's a whole lot going on in town council. There's a whole lot going on in Marston's Mills. So we're going to take it from town council right down to village day today. Excellent. So let's talk about town council. What are some of the initiatives that you're working on and what's happening in the meeting tonight? Well, uh, we have been for several meetings uh, looking at various proposals on zoning for cannabis. And uh, the state you know, has come out with very detailed regulations on what can be you know, zoned for and what can't. And so we're trying to find that sweet spot that uh, the town of Barnesville is ready for. And uh, in, in the town, we've had six precincts that voted for it and seven that didn't. So we're very understanding that there's some resistance to going mm -hmm. full force. And so the initial uh, item that we proposed uh, several months ago to allow retail establishments has sort of been withdrawn and taken off the table. And tonight we're considering uh, two proposals, one to ban all uses and one that would allow for cultivation, uh, lab testing, and I believe inspection services in a district. It, it's already the medical overlay. Okay. And I personally think that that's a great compromise and I'm hoping that uh, at the public hearing tonight we hear from all those who are most interested in this issue and we come to a conclusion that uh, while it might not be completely unified by the council at least there'll be a strong um, you know sense that we're moving forward together okay let's just back up a little bit so people uh, residents understand there already is an overlay district for medical mm -hmm. marijuana and that is included in the hyannis district the right. cape cod hospital health care area actually it's it's the, the medical marijuana overlay district is over in uh what was it's, it's in precinct one in the industrial okay. park area. in the industrial park okay right. and there hasn't been any one who has taken advantage of that zoning okay um the new proposed ordinance would allow in the larger medical overlay district that encompasses Cape Cod Healthcare right. and you know other medical offices okay. in Hyannis. Okay and then when you talk about the uh, pieces of the industry that would be there so cultivation that mm -hmm. would include uh, grow labs yes. uh, that kind of stuff right uh, then there would be the testing now the testing is is something very uh, interesting um, mm -hmm. that's high paying jobs absolutely and it's required any product that uh, has 
that goes to retail has to pass through an inspection. Right. And in fact, it's, uh, I, I believe there has not been one entity that has uh, been given that designation yet okay. in the state. Right. Uh, so, and to me, that would be a really good marriage for being in the medical marijuana, I mean, excuse me, in the medical overlay district. Right. And as you said, bring uh, in really good jobs and economic opportunities. So. Right. so that's interesting. So that's uh, th this evening. Right. It's uh, a joint session again with the planning with board. The planning board. The two proposals and the second proposal was a complete ban of everything? Yes. And that actually was introduced, uh, I believe, back in June. Uh, and it's been either continued or moved along. And so that basically didn't allow for any uses in the town of Barnstable. Um, we've had this, we've now had four proposals going forward, and we've right. got these two left. Okay. And again, if neither one of them passes, and they have to pass by a two-thirds majority, and that's mm -hmm. nine out of the 13 counselors have okay. to vote affirmatively for one or the other. Mm -hmm. And you know, if that doesn't happen, I guess probably something else will come up, um, because okay. we need to have s something in place before 1231 of this year, because we right. currently are under a temporary moratorium, but that expires at the end of this calendar year. Right, so the clock is ticking. Absolutely, so we want to come up t with a, a plan. And again, uh, even passing this doesn't, you know, there's still a lot of steps for any business to, to come in and, and set up a lab or, or even set sure. up a, a, a cultivation facility. Okay. But, I, but I think we really have some opportunity economically, um, you know, there are some provisions for, you know, increased taxes. Right. And as you said, you know, these are jobs that require, you know, some higher education and you know, really great opportunities for all demographics, I think. Excellent. So, you know, we might have some new workers in the area. Yeah. Where are they going to live, Paula? Oh, good question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've been fortunate to have you know, quite a lot of uh, new housing development in the Hyannis area, uh, mm -hmm. mostly market, market rate, which has been uh, something in our housing production plan that we have identified a, a great need for, and especially in the Hyannis area. Uh, Hyannis does have the water infrastructure, sewer infrastructure to support more dense housing. Mm -hmm. And our inclusionary zoning and our regulatory agreements provide for some of those units to be affordable, but right. as a percentage, it, it can be as little as 10%. Right. So, you know, we're creating more housing, but are we creating the housing that our, our entire community needs? Uh, and right. so I, I have some concerns, you know, with being able to promote some initiatives that really allow us to, you know, keep that balance in place. Right. Um, and. And that is some of your background as well, yes. is in uh, shelter and housing. Right. And when we look at that as a whole of Barnstable, it's great that, you know, Hyannis has that sewering and, and has some of that infrastructure, but not everybody wants to live in the big city of Hyannis, That's right. right? That's right. And we've had some really great examples of affordable right. housing projects in other, other villages in our sure. town. I mean, I, I'm very excited about the four habitat houses right. that are, are now under construction on River Road. It's yeah. just just a wonderful uh, development. Um, and that was, uh, it's on land that the town helped pay for with CDBG funds, as community development bro block grant right. funds, with federal money coming in. Yeah. And then uh, and then you have a nonprofit that's putting these houses up. But these houses are going to be in our tax roll. So that's that's a win-win for right. the town. And we've got four lovely families that are going to be you know able to live in our community. So now that doesn't create a lot of housing in one fell swoop, but right. it's those types of initiatives that we really have to be looking, you know, right. to be able to do. And uh, we are now the asset management committee, which is a town council subcommittee, um, just recently had a disposition of town tax title property. Right. Now all of that went out into the private market. Uh, so the next round, I really am keen on making sure that we consider affordable housing options for some of the parcels. You know, right. making sure that we're not, you know, closing the door on the opportunities um, that we might have right in our hands. Right, exactly. There's so. the land, it's already there. That's right. Um, you know, it's, it's basically laying fallow. We're right. not making any money off of taxes on it. Exactly. Let's use it and put it back on the tax rolls and affordable housing at the same time. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, let's talk about our favorite village, Marson's Mills. What's going on in the in the mills? Well, I I wish something more was happening this fall, but um, we're we're on schedule to have a major streetscape in the village, mm -hmm. and we had a great meeting with the town officials in April. 
uh, with the plans that were you know, presented at the time. And there was a lot of input from the citizenry that showed up. And I, I think, in a sense, that input may have delayed the project a little bit. I think there's a lot of conscientiousness to make sure that this project you know, really meets the needs of everybody, right. uh, not only the folks in the village, but the folks that are coming through. And so as of now, the project has not gone out to bid, so it will not be happening this fall. Um, but I'm going to keep my eyes on it. I, I think if we can uh, maybe get those bid packages up by the end of this year, we can start early spring. I mean, we right. don't want to inconvenience our business owners in the village any more than we have to. Um, right. They're prepared for this. So we kind of right. want to keep this thing moving. Um, and it's something that's been in the work for over 10 years now, yes. too. And it's it's in a dangerous, dangerous area. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're talking about 149 coming in from 28, right. uh, cash market right there. That whole little piece is, um, you know, it, it's a free-for-all some days <laughs> at those stop signs. Absolutely. So, um, and it's not very walkable. Right. It's not very walkable. <laughs> This is not uh, not to do with the, that road project, right. but I just wanted to mention that uh, there was a parcel uh, uh, affectionately called the Sprinkle Property that was recently um, purchased by the Burnsville Land Trust with the CPC right. money. And I haven't driven by it, but have they taken down the houses yet? They're, they're just on the... So that's the land that, that is right on the side of the mill pond. Yeah. And so that is going to be... Those Green space. Those two abandoned yes. houses there yes. on the right on 28? Yep. Oh my goodness, so that's those are, awesome. So those are coming down, I would say, by the end of this month or you know, early September at the And Beale, uh, Burnsville Land Trust has yes. uh, uh, conserved that as space? Yes, so they own it, and then the town has a conservation restriction on it. So, oh, so that's another win-win. And I was thinking in terms of the streetscape project, you right. know, it's also going to provide better access to Mill Pond. So, I mean, there's a right. lot of things that are working in concert and can be very exciting. So I'm hoping by the time we talk next year, a lot of this will be done. Yeah, so well, there's also dredging that might happen in Mill Pond, too. So there's, you know, all sorts of things happening in the village Absolutely. of Marsons Mills. But the most important event in Marsons Mills is Village Day. It's coming up. It's coming up. I can't wait. September 9th, that's a Sunday, yeah. uh, 12 to 4 o'clock and uh, when the hamburgers run out when the hamburgers run out usually and uh, we <laughs> and the the focus or theme this year is uh, Marsons Mills supports public safety okay. so we're going to have uh, folks from the police and fire you know that are going to be there helping flip in the burgers yeah. and uh, we're going to acknowledge or honor someone from from the services there yeah. and uh, it all caps off with the Liberty Hall uh, annual chicken barbecue. So uh -huh. um, get your orders in soon. Right. Right. So I have. It's always a fun event. It and is, and it's fun. They they close off from uh, the the uh, one forty nine side up through the school right. uh, up to Lovell's Lane. Right. Uh, it's completely walkable. There's little pony rides usually. That's right. There's all oh the bars is usually there with their chowder as well. Yes. The um, area. And there's going to be live music. Live music so this year as bring well. Bring your dancing shoes. Excellent. So. And uh, usually starts off with the raising of the flag with our com fire truck and uh, singing of the national anthem. That's right. Fantastic. I'll see you there. Okay. Thanks so much for coming right. in today, Paula. Thank you. <laughs> Katie Service, manager for the Barnstable Municipal Airport, has been on the job for just a little over a month and has flown into planning for the future at the airport. From old standard events to attracting new business and interests, she reaches for the sky in promoting the airport. The first month, um, actually, with the transition that Bud has provided for me, um, it actually went pretty smoothly in terms of I know who I'm working with, I know our commission well, I know um, a lot of folks in the town that I'm already working with on a regular basis. So being here for three and a half years prior to that transition was extremely helpful because I had boots on the ground, I was part of the system already, and so that was um, an easier transition. Um, transitioning my new assistant manager, Matt Ilya, into doing the tasks that I formally did. So we're still going a little bit back and forth with different uh, tasks and different jobs, but I'd have to say by being here for those three and a half years, that definitely helped with that transition. So every three years, the airport is required to look at their emergency response procedures and to have a full out drill where we have participants from all over the Cape that are assisting us as if it was a real incident occurring at the airport. 
It's a requirement for our airports that are certified under FAR Part 139, and it's just to test your response capabilities, your communication um, with other um, uh, members of the town, uh, working with through those uh, scenarios of what if, what if X happened, how would you respond to it? So we're testing our skills. So that is actually going to take place uh, this year on September 5th at 7 o'clock in the afternoon. We will have an incident that occurs here at the airport to test our skills. But typically what we do is we work hand in hand with the Hyannis Fire Department to do any type of drill that's coming on the airport. What people don't realize is that if something happens at the airport, let's say, God forbid, there's an accident, an aircraft accident, we have staff on hand who are our first responders. They're all trained in firefighting skills. They drill all the time, and they're trained to respond initially to that incident. Hyannis Fire comes immediately, and once they are here, they take over the scene. They are in control and in command and control of the scene. So we work hand in hand with Hyannis Fire to set up for these drills so that we're training our staff here, but they're also training and evaluating their staff on a response to the airport. So this year we're going to have a split drill. We're going to have a drill that occurs here to test our skills, and the Hyannis Fire Department will have a drill that's occurring in Lewis Bay. So we will have two scenarios that are taking place. It's a two-hour event that's occurring, but we want the community to realize that this is a drill. That's the main thing. We're going to be posting um, notices uh, several weeks prior to the drill. The Barnstable Police Department will be setting up um, electronic billboards for us that identify that this is a drill, it's an ongoing drill. We just want the community to be fully aware that it's to test our capabilities and respond to an incident. They will. So what we're doing is we're, we're having people respond as if it was a real incident. So we will even have a media response. We will have different mutual aid, um, fire, fire, we'll have firefighters from different towns um, within the Cape. We'll have responses from different ambulance companies. So they will see a lot of lights, a lot of sirens, a lot of response to the airport. Um, it will be hard not to miss that activity occurring because we will have ambulances that will be lined up on some of our roadways to get into the drill scene. So they will see a lot of activity, but please note that it's a drill. So the Wings of Freedom tour is put on by the Collins Foundation. The Collins Foundation is located in Stowe, Massachusetts, and they have um, a living history museum. And what I mean by living history is that their aircraft that they bring on the Wings of Freedom tour are operating World War II aircraft that you can actually jump in, um, get a flight in, pay for a flight, and it's just the sense of nostalgia to be able to see those aircraft, and the best thing is hearing those aircraft. To hear those radial engines, it's just, it brings you back in time. And I have to say that that's one of my favorite events that we have here at the airport because it gives people the opportunity to touch history. Because a lot of these aircraft, they flew in World War II. One of the aircraft that's coming here was part of Doolittle's Raiders. So there's a lot of sense of history that kids, you know, maybe they read about it in their history books and they know what happened with World War II, but to touch a plane that was part of that, that's an amazing feeling. So they'll be here for three days. They're going to be here the uh, 24th, 25th, and 26th. Uh, they arrive at noontime on the 24th, and they're here until 5 p.m. Then on uh, Tuesday, the 25th, they'll be here from 9 to 5, and then the following day will be their departure day. They'll be uh, here from 9 to noon. So look on our website for information. There's also information on our Facebook page that identifies uh, how much it is for uh, you to jump on a flight with the Collins Foundation. So it's all done through the foundation, but we operate it here at the airport on the east ramp. Excellent. And what is uh, uh, something new this year uh, within that, uh, the touch a truck uh, piece of it? Sure. So a lot of people have come to the airport, especially students that have made arrangements through their schools to come for an airport tour. And one of the biggest draws for that tour is to see the equipment that we actually use for, on a daily operation. Whether that equipment is um, firefighting equipment, whether it's a large you know, backhoe or uh, other piece of snow removal equipment, they don't normally see that out on the roadway. So it's important, I think, for kids who, and most kids love 
big trucks. So I think that if we have the Wings of Freedom tour, but also to have our trucks and our vehicles set up so that they get a chance to see what type of equipment we use to keep this airport operating, I think that's a, you know a great thing for our community to see. You know, this is what we work on to make sure that you're safe on the airfield to make sure the state airfield is open during the winter. So I think it's important for people to see that, to be part of that. Um, I'll, I'll step that back a little bit. So we have been talking with our airport commission. We've been working on a marketing plan for the airport. And one of the things that keeps on coming back is that there's a lack of aviation education, um, not only here at the airport, but also in general, nationwide. There are a lot of students that are just not interested in aviation. There isn't the drive there it used to be, and the industry is starting to really feel um, the pressures of that lack of interest. So we need to bring aviation back into um, education, and we need to start early. Uh, one of the things that we've um, embarked upon is to, one, have different events at the airport so that our community is getting used to the airport being here. This is what it offers. but send out a lot of buzz about the airport. Get people talking about the airport. What do they offer? You know, maybe a child will hear their parents talking about Barnstable Municipal Airport and say, oh, I could be a pilot or I could be a mechanic or I'm interested in possibly learning more about aviation. The more that we can get out in the public eye about aviation in general and to showcase this beautiful facility that is really, I mean, Barnstable's lucky. We're a multimodal town. We have ferries, we have we have trains, we have um, buses that come into the, and we have an airport. What more can we offer, you know, our community? So one of the things that we really need to do is get out in the schools and promote aviation. So that's one of our focuses. As part of that, we've been talking with our existing tenants about, you know, in general, what could we do to promote aviation? Cape Air came to me about two weeks ago and said, we would like to, um, open up a chapter of Women in Aviation. Women in Aviation is an international organization. I've been a member for many years. In fact, I belong to the New Bedford chapter for many years. And we said there's a lot of people on the Cape and the Islands that are interested in aviation. And, you know, oftentimes you find that a lot of people don't necessarily go over the bridge. So why not bring general aviation and bring a sense of women in aviation to this area and to this community? So that's the intention. In October, we hope to have an introductory meeting for anybody who's interested in being a member of Women in Aviation. The date has not been solidified yet, but it's, a, it's somewhere around the first or the second week of October to just present what we can do as an organization or what our hopes are to do as an organization and a chapter of Women in Aviation and how we can bring education back to this focus, aviation education in this region, and it might start with that chapter. Excellent. And did you want to mention the girls in? Sure, um, I know a little bit about the girls. So basically it's um, Girls in Aviation Day. It's something that Cape Air is promoting and I would urge you to, to speak with them to get more information. But it's gonna happen on October 23rd here at the airport. And from what I understand from talking to the folks at Cape Air, it's an opportunity to get girls in uh, different cities within Massachusetts that do not necessarily have the access or the means to, to uh, look into a career for aviation. Maybe it was never brought into uh, their mind as a possibility. Maybe their town that they live in or through their school, they don't have that type of discussion. So it opens up those doors for um, young girls to, to give them a sense that you can do this too. Aviation can be part of your life. And you know, you never know. Some of these young ladies that never even thought about ever aviation, they go to that airport and they see a few planes and they meet some women that are working um, for Cape Air, for Retric Shuttle, for JetBlue, and all of a sudden it opens up a whole world that they knew, never knew they had access to. And that's the purpose of uh, girls uh, in aviation. Here's a look at our community calendar. The 28th annual West Barnstable Village Festival is Saturday, August 18th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Events and activities at various locations throughout the village. At the railroad station, events include Coastal Excursion Train Ride at $2.25 for $12, a classic car, shoe, car show, barbecue by Barnstable Brisket Company, 1911 Train Station and Museum is opened by the Cape Cod Chapter National Railroad, historical society 
Railroad cars are open by Cape Cod Model Railroad Club with indoor and outdoor model train layouts and many more events and activities. Barnstable Community Building, Weldon Memorial Library, and the Meeting House Farm and Fire Station. There is a rain date of August 20th. More information, www.westbarnstable.org for more details. A reminder, Town Council meeting tonight, 7 p.m., Town Hall, second floor hearing room. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.